The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Cool. Well, thank you uh, all very much for coming to hear about Asterisk. Um, so, like you said, my name is Russell Bryant. I'm the uh, engineering manager at uh, Digium, the corporate sponsor of Asterisk for uh, the Asterisk development um, that goes on there at Digium. Um, I might just stand here. To there we go. Okay, so I've been working on Asterisk for, uh, since about 2004. Um, and in the last year, I've been doing a lot of writing about Asterisk. There's a couple of O'Reilly books, um, Asterisk, The Definitive Guide, and also a cookbook. Um, and both of those are Creative Commons books uh, that you can get online. Uh, there's another book that I wrote a chapter for called Architecture of Open Source Applications that if you're interested in getting an architectural overview of a bunch of, di uh, bunch of different really interesting open source projects, I'd encourage you to check that one out. It has, I think, 25 different projects covered there. So um, there's, you know, maybe, it's like 10 pages on Asterisk and just a bunch of projects. Uh, it's really an interesting read. That one's also another Creative Commons book uh, that you can read for free. So what I was gonna talk about today, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's new. So what are the things we've done recently in development land? What's gonna be, what's new in the next version of Asterisk? Um, and also I'm gonna go through a tutorial on building a custom uh, secure conferencing server. So I'm hoping that um, throughout these different things, regardless of your experience level with Asterisk, whether uh, you've just heard of it or whether you have a lot of experience using it, hopefully I have something new to tell you that perhaps you haven't seen. So that's what I'm gonna cover. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to ask them uh, in the middle. I certainly don't mind that at all. And, uh, and I, I expect that we'll have time at the end as well. So Asterisk 1.10, so that's the next, going to be the next version of Asterisk. Uh, we're, it's scheduled to be released in October uh, of this year, so just uh, not too far away, four months or whatever it is. Uh, and we plan to do the first beta release in July, which if you look at the calendar, isn't too far away. So we're actually really close to done uh, with uh, developing all the features that we have planned for that one. So an overview of what's new in there. Um, we, uh, the, the first one there, a media handling infrastructure rewrite, one of, the, one of the biggest projects actually we took on was one of these that I would call paying back a lot of technical debt. You know, we, uh, we, we, there was a, a significant area of our architecture that just was limiting us on, on how we were able to move forward. And that was a lot of how we uh, handled media internally. And so if you think about a phone system, its you know, primary purpose is to handle phone calls. Um, the, the, it's, your handling of, of media is, is a pretty critical component. Um, and, and then the reality is, since Asterisk started in 1999, um, what media is for calls has changed quite a bit. Uh, it's not just the plain old telephone calls anymore. There's, there's a lot more to it, higher quality audio, uh, video, messaging, and so sorts of things. So we've uh, done a lot of um, architecture work. Um, and as a result, we can support, we, we do support a lot more codecs than we have uh, historically, um, audio codecs and, and so forth. Um, we have a new conferencing application, which I'm gonna spend most of the talk today talking about, um, showing how to use it. Um, but Asterisk has had a, a conferencing application called Meet Me uh, that's been there for, for many, many years, um, and we have a new one that, uh, that blows it away in a lot of ways. Um, T38 fax gateway support. Uh, so T38 has to do with sending faxes over the internet. Um, people will not give up their fax machines uh, for whatever reason. Um, so this is sort of just the latest in that, um, that area. Um, another thing sort of related to media, uh, well, I guess Asterisk has always only been able to handle uh, calls, so, so a phone call with audio and so forth. In the next version, we can handle routing text messages, so IMs, uh, through the same routing platform. Um, 
through XMPP and SIP, uh, at least to start with. We're going to have Skype in there as well. Um, and there's a lot more smaller things. There's a file called changes that you can grab and read all about them. Like I said, I was going to spend most of the time talking about the conferencing application, which is called ConfBridge. Now, it, there's the application called ConfBridge is actually in uh, the past couple of releases, asterisk 1.6 and asterisk 1.8. Um, but uh, we have, it, was, it was very minimal. It was, sort of a, it was a pretty bare first start at it. And uh, the main you know, benefit that we got at that point was that it wasn't dependent on Dottie. So Dottie is our kernel package of uh, primarily for adding hardware support, but it also includes a conference mixing engine in the kernel. Uh, so we, Meet Me depends on that. Conferage doesn't, um, but it uh, was, didn't really have very many features at all. So uh, what we did in 1.10, um, we, we have, Confridge is mostly rewritten, but it, one of the biggest things is it supports um, many more types of, of audio. So not uh, traditional telephony is, is, is fairly low quality audio. It's an eight kilohertz sampling rate. Um, but the reality is uh, now that we're not as tied to the traditional telephone network, there's no reason to have your audio quality tied to the limitations of that uh, old telephone network. So we can now do conferencing of, of much higher quality audio. Um, it's also much more configurable. There's a lot of uh, cool ways that you can add features to it and configure it. And we spent a lot of time uh, on performance of this one. Um, and some per comparisons against Meet Me, it was triple the performance on a pretty, uh, a pretty weak, it was like some single core Celeron box or something we were doing this testing on. But based on the way Conference is designed, it would actually be a much higher impact if we were to redo that testing on a uh, multi-CPU or well, at least a multi-core machine. Um, since it, uh, it does a better job of allowing things to be parallelized. So, um, so like I said, uh, it's, it, the new Conference Bridges uh, has a lot of interesting uh, configuration uh, possible that you weren't able to do before. Um, there's a configuration file where you, you define uh, profiles um, related to the Conference Bridge itself, profiles for users joining Conference Bridges that apply a bunch of different options, and also we can do customized menus. So in the um, older iterations of conferencing support and asterisk, there's these end call menus. You get the star key and then some number and let you do things. But all of that's very, it's hard coded. Both what the features do and what keys map to those features were not anything you could change. But that um, you can completely customize now. I have some examples of that uh, coming later on in the tutorial. So we're going to uh, build a customized secure conferencing server. Um, using asterisk 1.10 and the new ConfBridge. What uh, is our conferencing server going to consist of? Uh, we're we're going to set up both the client side and the server side. Um, the server side is obviously going to be asterisk. I picked one particular client that, that uh, works for me, um, and I'll show you how to set it up. We're going to use the, uh, the newest ConfBridge code, um, and we're going to use uh, high, higher quality audio, the, the G722 codec in particular. Um, which is higher quality than what you get in, with a traditional uh, telephony. Uh, we're going to use encryption for, the, for all the phone call. There's actually sort of two portions of that. Um, the way, uh, so SIP is the uh, most popular industry standard uh, voice over IP protocol. And there's the SIP part that handles call setup. And then there's media streams to pass audio. And so there's SIP TLS using just standard TLS to encrypt that part. And then uh, SRTP stands for secure RTP. So it's encrypted. Um, media streams. So we're going to set that up. And then uh, we're going to look a little bit at how you set up the um, features uh, for, for the conference bridge and how you could add some custom stuff. So step one, you got to install asterisk. At this point, since we're using asterisk 1.10 and we haven't even released the first beta, you got to grab it out of subversion if you were to do it today. Um, so I went through this, this whole thing um, in this last week. And so you know, you got to check it out of subversion. Um, you got to uh, build it. What, there's some notable dependencies that are important. Um, open SSL, I mean, that's going to be on virtually every system. You, don't, you probably already have that. Uh, lib SRTP is not something you uh, likely have, so you have to make sure you install that. Uh, there's a uh, sort of a build configuration utility included with Asterisk called Menu Select. Uh, run that, make sure that the secure RTP module will be built, because uh, that will be required. Um, and then install it. So. Um, there's a, a really good tutorial for uh, setting up encrypted phone calls on our wiki. Um, so my tutorial covers a lot of the same things, but if you want a more detailed look, I just want to point to that. Malcolm Davenport wrote that one, so you know, give him some props there. 
Um, so we're going to, so now we've installed Asterisk, we need to configure uh, encrypted uh, SIP, so SIP TLS, uh, the encrypted call setup. Um, in, in my example here, I used this, if you have experience managing a certificate authority and creating certificates, then you can do it however you want. Um, if you want to just get it going, we have a script included with Asterisk that'll help you out. Um, so I, so uh, I go, you know, this, these commands are going into the Asterisk directory. I'm running the command that's going to both generate a certificate authority and uh, create one certificate. Um, let me need to dump us some, uh, some files there. But uh, I wouldn't recommend going this route except for sort of your own um, prototyping purposes, you know, do the real deal if you're setting up a production system. Um, we have to enable TLS in the SIP configuration of asterisk. So in asterisk, um, all the configuration lives in the uh, Etsy asterisk directory. There's a file called sip.conf, which is all of your uh, configuration related to SIP. Um, gonna enable TLS. Uh, I set the bind address to colon colon, which um, means any IPv4 or IPv6 address on the system. Asterisk does support IPv6. Um, point to the certificate, a, uh, a server certificate, point to the certificate authority cert, a um, couple more options. So, you know, just drop that in as it is. Uh, we need to add an account. So, um, if this is a fresh installation, uh, you have to add uh, an account for a SIP phone, for a phone to be able to call in. So, you'd have to add one of these per client that you were setting up. But this is one uh, that I added for my uh, demo here. Um, it's, uh, you, 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 well, you, you have to put in a password. Um, it's not a, there's not a specific IP address. Host is dynamic. So that means that this could be, so I have it, had it installed on my laptop. So my laptop can be anywhere and it's going to connect to asterisk uh, from wherever it is. Um, and some uh, parameters related to uh, the, the way it sends DTMF. Uh, the, another, I guess, important, the, the most important things here are these three. Uh, down here, so allow a G722. I'm saying that I want the t for this account to use that audio codec. That's the high quality or higher quality audio. Yes, question. Is that a very specific um, so the question was: Is G722 a variable bitrate codec? Um, it it well it 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 does actually support two bit rates. Um, in practice, only one of them is ever used, um, so I think we only use one of them. It's, it's the same bit rate as, as MuLaw or ALaw, so it's 64 kilobits per second, um, but double the, uh, the sampling rate. So it's... So it doesn't have Okay. Um, I, I haven't read about what you're talking about. So what he was saying was there, he's uh, heard of some weaknesses with um, certain audio codecs where you can, based on, uh, I guess, the, the amount of uh, the bandwidth being consumed. Sure, sure. So, so G722 is a constant bit rate codec. So it's a, 60, it's a 64 kilobit stream constantly, so does, that doesn't apply. Um, transport equals TLS, we're, we're specifically saying that we only want this client to connect over uh, an encrypted signaling method. Encryption equals yes seems sort of redundant, but what actually that's for is the media streams part. So we're saying the signaling must be encrypted, the media must be encrypted. Um, setting up a SIP client, so to the client side, we were looking at the server side, now we're gonna set up a client. Uh, the one I uh, played with, or and I use this one quite a lot because I like it, uh, it's called Blink, it's open source. You can find it at iCanBlink.com. Uh, it supports Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, I think it's awesome. So. Uh, and it does support SIP TLS and SRTP and, and uh, supports a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff. So it's, a soft, it's my soft phone of choice these days, um, but there's, there are plenty of others out there. So you gotta add an account. Um, adding an account in a soft phone, in some of them, uh, the configuration is quite complex. And this one, it, it's as simple as it can get. Um, you add a SIP address. So in, in this case, I have Russell Confbridge demo at russellbryant.net and then a password. And that's, um, that's, that's it for the base configuration. There's a couple more things we're gonna, we have to set uh, for encryption purposes. Um, so we have to, um, this one, this is a little bit of a hack, um, but you know, if you, when, you're, when, I was first, when I was first setting this up, I didn't have the, the, the appropriate records in DNS. So 
when my account is uh, you know Russell at russellbryant.net, um, it has to know what server to go to when it's sending a phone call to the domain russellbryant.net. It, it finds that information uh, in DNS using an SRV record, and I have those there, but I put them in DNS at the same time I was setting this up. So um, I had to set, have to set this option here. So I had to explicitly say when calling russellbryant.net, you connect to the server pbx.russellbryant.net on a particular port, and then there's also a parameter saying use the transport TLS because there's multiple transports that could be used. So um, set an option here, getting it to sort of hard coding the fact that it's going to talk to this particular server using this particular transport. One more thing, uh, there's a go to the RTP area of settings and uh, enabled SRTP encryption. That's disabled by default, set it to mandatory. So, no, um, SRTP does not, um, so the way it works is it uses certificates to, um, to, to set up a TLS session for the, the, the um, SIP signaling, so the call setup part. And the, the key negotiation for the media stream is done in the signaling stream. So as it negotiates the call, it's also doing key exchange uh, inside of those messages. So that's all automatic, yeah. And the idea is since the SIP messages are encrypted, it just does some, some key exchange there. Um, and uh, yeah. So no configure. there's no configuration, uh, there's no keys. The only configuration is on this side, you have to say use it. And on the asterisk side, you say use it, the encryption equals yes part. So um, we have to make sure that our client has connected. So uh, to back up, we installed asterisk, we configured, um, we, we added the SIP account, we enabled SIP TLS. I created my uh, Blink ac my account in the Blink soft phone, and I'm gonna just go to the asterisk command line interface and verify it connected. I do, when I run this command SIP show peer, um, it'll spit out a bunch of stuff. The most important one is uh, this one to look at, um, and it tells you the IP address and port number that the, the SIP client has connected from. So um, if, if it has not connected to asterisk, that would be blank, or it would say unknown or something. It wouldn't say an IP address. Um, and it also knows what client particular application connected, so put that there too. It knows it was blank that it's connected. So that showed that uh, the client was successfully configured and has connected to asterisk. So now we've got to, um, now we've got to create some things in asterisk for the client to send some calls to. So this is the first thing that I created here. Um, this this uh, screen's kind of small, so I apologize if you can't, if you can't read it. Um, but this, this, this is a asterisk dial plan. This is where you create, um, it's sort of where you script handling of a phone call. Um, this is, so there's four things that happen here. There's an answer, there's a couple of no ops, which don't actually do anything, and then echo, which means it's gonna repeat back all the audio I send asterisk back. Um, but these couple of no ops, there's some logic going on here to print out from the asterisk console whether uh, the call that has come in is secure or not. So the uh, secure signaling and secure media. Um, uh, and you have to tell it to reload the uh, routing configuration. And I'm gonna make a call to asterisk. So when you make a call in, this is some, some stuff, some verbose um, stuff being printed out on the console to show you uh, that the call is hitting um, the stuff we just added to our dial plan. Um, it's answering, uh, these, it's showing uh, what, it runs this no-op application which doesn't do anything except for uh, it allows us to get some stuff printed out. So, so the logic determined that the uh, signaling, the secure signaling uh, evaluated to yes, secure media evaluated to yes, and then it echoes, so you can talk to yourself. But it's, it's always a good uh, first test to do, it's an echo test. So, all right, so we've got, uh, we got asterisk installed, uh, we've got a client installed that can successfully make encrypted phone calls to asterisk, so now we have to do the conferencing part. So, we jump over to the uh, confbridge configuration file called confbridge.conf. I mentioned before, the way you configure confbridge, uh, you create profiles in there. So the first thing we have to create is a bridge profile. And I called it creatively my bridge. Um, and the only option I set is record conference equals yes. So anytime uh, 
people call into this conference and talk to each other, it automatically gets recorded. Um, we have to create user profiles. I, I created two us uh, user profiles here. There's a base user, and then the second one here is an administrator called you know, admin user. And this is, means it inherits from base user and just adds an additional option, uh, admin equals yes. So um, I set a, a number of options here for, for this, in this user profile. Um, the first one, music on hold when empty. So if you're the only person in the conference, you get to hear music. Uh, announce user count. As people join, it's, or, uh, it's gonna tell you there are now three people in the conference. Um, announce only user, it tells you explicitly when you join, you're the only person, it's just a different prompt it plays. DSP drop silence is part of the performance work that we've done. Um, it's one of the optimizations done. It's detecting when, if, if a particular caller is not talking, then there's no value in processing its media and mixing it into the conference. So it's just, it's waiting for someone to start talking before it starts mixing that audio in. Um, so that is a big performance bump. I think it's on by default. I don't know why you'd ever turn it off um, unless you had too many uh, callers that spoke really quietly or something. But um, you can turn it off. But um, talk detection events, um, as a part of the optimization, you can also get notified via um, a management interface that when, when different people will start talking, you know, which is good if you're building an, an, an application, perhaps outside of Asterisk to manage conferences. Um, Denoise, so, and that does automatic noise cancellation. Okay, uh, another uh, configuration bit. So I mentioned before in Meet Me, you configure, um, well, excuse me, in Meet Me you can't configure the menu. So the, when, you, uh, when you're in a, on a conference call, and when you press keys and do features, that's all hard-coded and built in. In ConfBridge, it's entirely um, configurable. So this is, a, this is a menu that's similar to what you would have in Meet Me, but it's from the configuration file. Um, and, it's, and its syntax is effectively a, a key sequence and then some action. So uh, the first one, when someone presses the star key, it says playback and continue. Um, so if someone presses the star key, it's going to play a particular prompt that tells you what options you have avail available to you. Press four to decrease volume, blah, 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 all these things. Um, so uh, you can press star and then a number uh, to get a feature, or you can just press the number, well, the way it's configured, or you can just press the number directly and skip the prompt playback part uh, and execute a feature. So if you wanna swap around features, only enable certain ones for some users, et cetera, uh, you have the power to do so. Um, I'm gonna create a second menu for an administrator. Uh, it, it inherits from this base menu from the last slide. It just adds, uh, it plays a different prompt and it adds a couple more uh, actions, some administrator things. So you can kick people out of the conference or prevent more people from joining. That's what those couple of things do. Um, okay, so we created all the stuff, all the configuration for a conference bridge. Now we have to go back to the call handling file, which is extensions.conf, and create a couple of extensions uh, to call into our new conference, which we just created. So I created a couple different things. There's confbridge user and confbridge admin, so I could test out calling as a regular user or calling as an administrator. And for each one, it's um, conference, conference bridge one, two, three, four, five. They both use uh, the same bridge profile, which just turned on conference recording. Uh, the next section is the uh, user profile, so the regular user uses this base user profile. The, if you call into the administrator version, it uses the admin user profile, which marks the person as an administrator so they can perform additional actions. And then the last option is uh, the menu. So this, if you call in this way, you get the regular user's menu, or this way, you get an administrator's menu. Um, so that's our, uh, our custom conference there. Um, so then you gotta call it. So in Blink, the way you make a call, uh, and I guess keep in mind, uh, you know, you're not restricted to calling numbers. So as you saw, like, the number is actually confbridge user. So uh, you just type it in this box, hit enter. A little slider comes out and lists all your active calls. This particular one is a call to conference, uh, excuse me, confbridge user at russellbryant.net. Um, and I had a conference with myself. And my wife looked at me funny. Um, so that's, you know, that's what blank looks like while you're on the call. 
Um, okay, so uh, the custom menu features. So one, I guess one of the things that I really, really like about the customized menus is an action that you can, that you can do called dial plan exec. So you map a key sequence to dial plan exec something in the dial plan. So that means from a conference, you press a key and it can run anything you want. That can be either uh, the dial plan code or you can go off to any you know, scripting language of your choice and do whatever you want. Um, which, is, which is pretty cool. Um, and, one, and to demonstrate that, I wrote a feature call, uh, for doing outbound calls from a conference. So if you're on a conference call and you're like, you know, it'd be really great if uh, you know, Mark Michelson was here because you know, he sure knows a lot about this particular topic, then uh, I just I hit the, the feature code and type in his cell phone number, and then Asterisk makes a call to him and connects him into the conference. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how you would add that feature to ConfBridge. Um, and it actually works, too. So this is all, this is all it took in the dial plan. Um, I created this, this one extension here. Um, when it starts, it plays back a beep sound just so that I know that when I press the keys to activate the feature that it worked. So it you know, gives me some feedback. Then it's going to wait for me to type in a number. And then it originates a call. So it's going to beep at me. I type in Mark's cell phone number. I hit pound to tell it I'm done, and then it goes off. It makes a phone call um, and connects it to the uh, ConfBridge um, demo um, extension. So, um, excuse me, the ConfBridge demo context, the, and it, it, connect, it basically connects his call to ConfBridge user, which is what we set up a little while ago. And back in the ConfBridge configuration, um, just going to add a couple more things to the administrator's menu. I only want administrators to, to make more calls, um, so I added if they do star five uh, or just press five, it goes off and executes that custom feature I just made. Um, there are probably some more things you could do. Um, if, you didn't, if you wanted to have call recording on demand, that'd be easy to do with a custom feature like that. Um, if you wanted to have a, a silly soundboard, uh, you could you know, just Anything that you can do in dial plan, which is pretty much anything you can write a program for, um, you, could you could connect to a conference through that way. So it's pretty neat. Uh, so in recap, so what I, what I covered was some new stuff in 1.10, and then I blasted through a tutorial on setting up uh, a, a, a new conference server uh, using uh, encryption for your voice over IP calls. And with that, um, I am more than happy to take any questions on any, uh, whether anything I've talked about or anything about asterisk in general. Um, yes, question. Um, the conference features that you showed, are, are those only present in 110 or do they exist today in conference and prior to 110? So the question was, are the conference features I've talked about, uh, are they only going to be present in asterisk 1.10 or will they um, exist in any earlier versions? And the answer is they're only going to exist in 1.10, or at least that's the plans right now. Uh, I, 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 yeah, well, I guess you know, it's only software we could backport it, but we don't have any plans to. It's, it's a 1.10 specific thing. Um, and parts of that are dependent upon a lot of our uh, media architecture improvements that we've done in 1.10 as well. So it would actually be fairly difficult to backport. Question in the red there. So the, the question was, for the conference recording feature, is it just one recording for the conference as a whole, or is there some additional information you, know, you can know about uh, which, which um, who was, like, I guess, who was what? Um, so the built-in recording is the conference as a whole, and you don't have any information beyond, it's just like a, you know, a wave file on disk, right? Um, if you, instead of, if you wanted to have separate recordings of each participant and associate them together, you can do that. It wouldn't be using the built-in feature. You would you would enable recording on each caller individually instead of the conference bridge itself, and you would get uh, recordings for each person. And you can even have it, yeah, so you can do that. It would just be a more complex configuration, but the, all the tools to make that happen are, are there. That sort of answers the question, I don't know. Does the conference worker video calls? The question was, does the conference worker video calls? No, it doesn't. Yeah, I, uh, I could go on a spiel, but yeah, we're gonna do that. You no, know, we really we want to, we just haven't done it yet, so. Doesn't, doesn't exist yet. Um, I guess uh, one of the, but I will say that um, better video, so you can make video calls with asterisk, but it's like point to point, right? So um, 
But getting further than that, one of the prerequisites was, man, the way we handle it, media and asterisk is very audio, it's very, it's very audio specific in a lot of areas. The video edition was a bit of a hack. Uh, we just got to go redo all of that. And we've done that now. So we've done a lot of the prerequisites to now we can finally go back and, and make video support uh, much, much better. And that's probably like, that's going to be on our list for the next, next go around. So we can add, we, we've done all the prerequisites. Now we can add video transcoding support. So that's been a problem with video is because, you know, different people, different types of video clients using different video codecs. If, if they don't negotiate, if they're not using the same thing, then it just doesn't work. Um, but now that we've uh, done a lot of the infrastructure work, we can add video transcoding support fairly easily, um, at least from a software perspective. How many video transcoding sessions you can actually handle in your box is a whole other problem. Um, but, in, but we can add video transcoding, uh, which is actually going to, and that's required to do video conferencing because typically what people expect is you need to be able to do, um, when multiple people call in, you stitch them together, right? So you have like, you see like the four people in there at least, that's that's what I, it would be. Or you can also do things like only you show the person who's currently talking, but that it's it's easier to implement. But in practice, people don't actually like that very much. It's actually kind of distracting because it keeps you know the screen just keeps changing like crazy on you, and it's much more pleasant to just look at the group of people all at the same time. Um, but to do that, we have to have the ability to manipulate video streams, which we just were pretty far away from in the past. But we're much closer now. So, short back to the, the question. No, we cannot do video conferencing yet. Uh, luckily, we've done lots of infrastructure work to make it uh, so that we're much closer to being able to add it. Um, I'd like to be able to say we can be able to have it in the next release, but you know, we'll see what the priorities turn out to be. Yeah, it's it's certainly yeah, we'll see. Maybe that maybe that can be what I talk about next year, but um, we don't have it yet. All right. Any other questions about uh, anything about asterisk? Or not about asterisk, I guess. About dinner or something. <laughs> cool. Well, um, okay, question. Slides available. Um, I think uh, Jeremy, who's the speaker coordinator for Self, said he's going, he's going to be collecting all the slides and I assume posting them somewhere. Uh, so I certainly will be giving him these. Um, also, feel free to email me if for some reason you can't find them. I don't mind sharing. Um, I can put them up on the interwebs somewhere. Um, so, but I don't have them posted anywhere just yet. Uh, no, the, the conference, uh, this tutorial, I, uh, it only exists in the slides at the moment. Um, it'd probably be a good thing to put on our wiki. I just haven't done it. But so right now, it's just in the slides. Please do. Well, cool. I'm, I'm glad you found it useful. Well, uh, thank you all very much for coming. I appreciate your attention um, and interest. Oh, I got another question. One more. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Cloud crap. Is it for you to not just pull the slides up, but you know, like for AWS images and stuff that you can fire up an actual actual photo? Oh, okay. So the question was, um, you know, the cloud is all the rage, so you know, how about a pre built uh, image with all of this stuff set up? Um yeah, I guess it's technically possible. Um, I, I, I can certainly provide the configuration files that would get you a long way there. Um, I don't know if I can commit to having the time to, to, put, to put together an image, and I don't know where I'd host it anyway. Um, but I'd be happy to provide configuration files that were built along with the tutorial, <laughs> and, that, and that'll get you at least a good way there. Um, Digium does produce a, it's really, it's, a re, it's CentOS rebranded, so it's, it's uh, CentOS with a, uh, a YUM repository that we manage that has asterisk, among other things, in it. Um, and we release an ISO that has all that set up that makes it pretty quick and easy to get asterisk up installed if you don't feel like installing manually. But anyways, question back. Oh, <laughs> I had a... Uh, Please pass along thanks to whoever passed along, uh, to whoever's making the Debian packages. I will certainly do so. Um, the Debian package, it, so we've been making RPM packages for Asterisk for some number of years now, and we just started making Deb packages for Debian and uh, Ubuntu in the last few months. Um, the person doing the work is Paul Belanger. Um, I'll let him know. He will be happy to hear it. Uh, he was excited to be able to do the project, and uh, it seems to be well received, so glad you like it too. 
All right, well, thanks again. Um, and if you want to come up and talk about anything, uh, no problem at all. Thanks you very much. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. WebOS, an OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices, HP Slate and WebOS, HP.